Do you already do a hashtag ask for Oh, I am not. I'm sure? killing. Uh, no, I am killing the hashtag. I'm really confused about this. Because it's not like 2012 anymore. <laughs> hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Ask Firebased. I'm your host, Jen Person, and today I'm joined by Frank Van Puffelen. So welcome back. I'm so glad to have you here. And you're going to help me answer some Firebase questions. Yeah, definitely. It was so much fun last time that I can't wait to see what questions you have for us this time. Great. So let's just get right into it then. Our first question here comes from Sumit Kumar on Twitter. And he says, how can I test my cloud functions with database, auth, and storage triggers locally before deploying them? It's a great question. We now actually have a shell. And you okay. can emulate an, essentially any uh, cloud function locally. So you just run it locally, and you um, invoke it with the data that you want. So you can use it for quickly testing, or also throwing some like weird data at it that, that you might not easily get in real life, but you still want your code to handle it. So Yeah, that's huge. I'm really yep. excited about this. It's really nice. I mean, sometimes I enjoyed having those like couple minutes where you deploy, <laughs> and you can just go get yourself a snack while you're no, waiting. I'm um, always drinking way too much coffee when that <laughs> happens, so no. So cool. it's nice. Yes, you can uh, test them locally now. Yeah. Um, we'll throw a link in the documentation mm -hmm. so you can check out how to do that. Great, cool. Yeah, that's a definitely heavily requested feature. Yeah, so. no, we are very glad that it's out indeed. Yeah. So. All right, let's see what else we got here. Also from Twitter, where we get lots of great questions. Mm -hmm. Emery Owner says, can I send email with Firebase functions, like let's say a newsletter? Oh yes, definitely. Ah, it's one I of love the, this sample. Yeah, it's one of the common use cases actually. Yeah. We have it on our documentation, but that doesn't mean it's not a good question. So uh, you would set up essentially in somewhere like your Firebase database or Firestore, you keep a list of the users that you want to send the newsletter to, right? So if they've subscribed. And then uh, you set up a function that you trigger periodically. And do you know how to do that? Why, yes, I do. Um, so one of the ways that you can do it, I actually made a video about it. So we'll throw that link in there as well. Yeah, but you can uh, set up a cron job using an HTTP triggered function. And then you can just however much you want to trigger that once a week, once a day. It would just uh, call that function and send out the email. There are email services that you can choose to mm -hmm. use for that. It really depends on what your use case is. But yeah, again, we have a great sample for that. So check it out. All right, let's check out this next question. Adeep Patel says, I would love to see a series for server-side code. I think this is a very important point for any application. Yeah, for sure. No, it is. Right, with Firebase, we try to make sure that you can focus on client-side code as much as possible. But there's always a few cases where you really can't run things on the client, and then you need server-side code. That's why we're so happy that we now have Cloud Functions available, right? Yeah. Which you know very well, because Absolutely. you did some great series on it. Yeah, and I'm going to be doing even more, specifically looking at uh, the Firebase Admin SDK. So uh, this can be used in conjunction with Cloud Functions, but it's also an option for other kind of server-side code if you choose not yeah. to use Cloud Functions. Because you might have situations where instead of just having something that you want triggered when a certain action occurs, you want something that can run all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll be looking into those. But as I start making these videos, I would love to hear more Ask Firebase questions around what sort of server-side questions you have. So this is where you all come in, right? So if you have a question about how would I do this with some server-side versus client-side code, or how would you actually implement something on the server with the admin SDK, Put the question on Twitter, on Stack Overflow, and tag it with Ask Firebase, and Jen might get to it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, without your questions, I can't have this show. So yep. got to send them my way. Mm -hmm. Ooh, the next one I'm going to read. It's from Jabbar Asadi. And his question is, what's the difference between Google Cloud Messaging and Firebase Cloud Messaging? And I think you might know that one. Yeah, I'll definitely take this one. Um, so uh, Firebase Cloud Messaging is the latest, most up-to-date version of Google Cloud Messaging. And mm -hmm. we have some. Uh, great uh, large-scale clients that use Google Cloud Messaging. We send billions of messages a day. I, I mean, I had to look up that number again. I just couldn't believe it. So Firebase Cloud Messaging, being the latest service, offers a few different features that um, you know have sort of built upon this great mm -hmm. foundation of Google Cloud Messaging. So let's see. A couple of things that you can do is you can subscribe users to specific topics, and you can send messages targeted by different combinations of those. So maybe you want to send a message to uh, users who are subscribed to two different topics. Mm -hmm. 
or subscribe to one and not to another one. Uh -huh. So you have different options that you can have to put together. So it's really customizable, so you're not spamming all of your users. You're really targeting that. That's pretty cool, actually. Yeah. I also heard that there was something recently released called Platform Overrides. Can you tell me more about that? Uh, yeah, this was a huge push, and I'm really glad that we have it because, as you probably know as developers, um, the different platforms, you know, web and iOS and Android, have slightly different ways of doing messaging. Um, so what that means is it was a challenge to send a similar looking message mm -hmm. to your different platforms. Yeah. You actually had to even have, let's say you had a topic for a specific sport, you'd have to have that topic for iOS app and Android app if you wanted to be able to have them, let's say, select that message and go to a specific yep. spot in your app. But now with platform overrides, you can send one message and it has options to send depending on uh, what platform your users are on. So you can just have a single topic and uh, you know it allows you to much easier and more quickly target those users. It's very cool. So it means that you could have a single message that you send to users both on iOS and Android and it behaves as they would expect on, on each of the platforms. Then. Exactly. Ooh, that's yeah. nice. I hope that actually answers your question, Jabbar. All right, let's see if we got any other ones. Abdullah on Twitter says, how do I use auth.phone number in Firebase security rules? So let's say you want to make sure that uh, to access a specific piece of data, um, they are the user that was signed in. So sort mm -hmm. of how we use security rules for you know, other things. Yeah, no, definitely. It's a good question. Actually, I think it's so good that I think I already answered this one on Stack Overflow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I have a full example there, but the phone number of a, a user that has authenticated with the phone number is available in your security rules. So you can, in your security rules, find it under auth.token.phone number, and then you can actually use that phone number everywhere. Uh, as usual, same as with other uh, forms of authentication, I recommend that you mostly try to stick to using the user ID, the UID in your rules to secure, and then do a lookup of the phone number where needed. But if you want to secure it directly on the phone number, it's available in auth.token.phone number. Yeah, that's a really good point, because with the UID, then no matter how your users are signing in, you have a consistent method of security rules. Exactly. Imagine that a user first signs in with a phone number, and then later they sign in with uh, a Facebook provider, for example. Then you actually your phone number security rule won't work anymore. But the UID of that user will still be the same. So. Well, thanks, everyone, for watching another episode of Ask Firebase. And thank you so much, Puff, for coming on the show and helping me answer some questions. It's my pleasure. Yeah, be sure to stay tuned for future episodes to see some great Firebase questions answered. And if you have a great question, make sure you hit us up on social media with the hashtag Ask Firebase, and maybe you'll see it on a future episode. Yeah, remember, everyone, keep asking questions. It's the only way we can make shows like this. Thanks for joining. Fine. Oh, my God.